So the first piece that I'm going to read from you is one called Writing. Dear Mabel, I have found this lovely photo of you. It comes from the summer of 1922, shortly after Alec died. You can see the photo right here next to me. And it was taken by your son-in-law, David Fairchild, who was then the editor of National Geographic magazine. You are sitting at your morning desk at Vian Bray, the estate at Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, and a very small table with the typewriters before you, and you are engaged in writing. Your right hand is on the carriage, and there's a fresh piece of paper just rolled in. You sit in a wicker chair, and light from both windows in front and behind you floods in and illuminates both your back and face. It must be close to midday. Now first, let me say I think you should get a different chair. This one must be very bad for your back. I hope you at least have a pillow wedged at your lumbar area. And that desk is so small that you have no place to put your water, your tea, your wine, a piece of toast. Can you really write without food or drink? I've been reading and rereading your letters, Mabel, trying to get a handle or a glimpse or an impression of your life through the words you left on pages to others. You loved letters, didn't you? Everything about your posture and your composure in this image says that. You lean slightly forward, not pained, but both dirty and relaxed, in the kind of engagement that seems not intense, yet seriously attentive. Your hand is at the typewriter carried, ready to roll your day, your thoughts, and your very self into written words. Your profile seems serene yet studious, eager but inappropriately zealous as you contemplate the correspondence ahead of you. I wish you would write to me. You are always begging Alec to write. Your telegrams never say anything of yourself, how you are and what you're doing. I can't stand this silence much longer. I must have a letter no matter how busy you are. Have you really no desire to make me share in your thoughts and feelings? From a letter dated 27th, June, 1888. No word from you today. I wish there were. I think your lambs could spare you long enough to indict a telegram, at least. From the 21st of June, April, 1891. I want to thank you so much for your kind letter received today. It is so nice to get a little petting and sympathy from you, Alec, dear from the 23rd of November, 1896. Still no word from you, 29th of May, 1898. I did not think it was a very kind or gracious thing for you to tell me that to write to me properly was to steal time from your thoughts and experiments. Surely your wife has a right to a few minutes of your time and thoughts in every once in a while, or once in a while, 20th of May, 1899. And at the end of that same letter, good night. I have sat up late to write all this. Will you read it at all? I know your abhorrence of long letters, but I forgot it until just now. I will not bother you again in this way. I find, however, I like typewriting. It does not tire my hand the way a pen does, and I fancy you prefer it to my penmanship. You have no old-fashioned preferences for something your wife's hand has touched and which spares the mark of her individuality. From the 20th of May, 1899. Yet, Mabel, your letters clearly did bear the mark of your individuality. I see that mark in this late photograph of you, how the light shines when you are writing your letters, how your morning room could eclipse into noon and you would still be at peace writing. You remind me of something I once wrote in an essay on passing. Writing is my pass, writing is my passageway, through writing I pass. I will write again soon, BJB.